talk a lot in my lessons about using the tools, the legitimate tools that are available to you to help you in your writing, whether this is English 101, English 102, or communication, or English 203, or, or you're going to be taking future courses that require writing. And many college courses will, even if they're not specifically about writing. And so one of the legitimate tools that you should be using that I beg, plead, encourage, suggest, that you use is a grammar and spell checker. And the one I use and the one that is most common is called Grammarly. So I'm gonna show you how that works and how easy it is to use. And so what we have here is on your screen, you should be able to see a paragraph that is full of errors. It's got spelling errors, syntax errors. By syntax, I mean just the way a sentence is put together. It might technically be grammatically correct, but it is hard to understand. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Capitalization errors, punctuation errors, etc. I had uh, an AI engine, generative engine, write this for me just to make sure I got some silly mistakes. So there it is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this text. Everybody knows how to do that. You're just going to copy that text. And then I'm going to open a tab that has Grammarly on it. Now, your, when you use Grammarly, it might look a little different. I am subscribed to Grammarly for free. I have it, so I have an account. And so it is always running. When I write an email, it's following my writing and suggesting corrections as I write because I have it always running in the background of Windows. Now, you don't have to do that. It might drive you crazy, but here's how easy it is to use Grammarly. So I'm going to click here on new. And remember, I have that text copied. So I'm now going to paste it right here. And what it does, this is the free version, okay? It's not the, the premium version, it's the free version. And it's showing errors all the way through, spelling errors, punctuation, here's a capitalization error, Here's a complete sentence error. And when you see something that you want it to correct, you, you just click on accept and it fixes it for you. Here's another one. Now, as I said, sometimes it wants to make changes to, to the way I write and it changes my voice and I don't let it because I have a certain way of writing that, that I've developed over many, many years and I don't want to change that voice. We all express ourselves a little bit differently, and there's a lot of opportunity to do that inside the English language and still be correct. But you can see here, it is step by step, with your permission, with my permission, correcting all of these errors, where it's suggesting remove pure exhilaration, remove the word pure, I wanna keep pure. So I'm just going to leave that alone and go down to the next. From the time, it wants me to change that. Well, I don't want to change that, but I do want to correct my the lack of an apostrophe in I've, and so I have it corrected. Here's a misspelling. Here's a misspelling. Correct. Accept. Accept. Here's an incomplete sentence. I want it to change that. And so it adds a comma there and, and just it makes it part of that prior sentence. So now what we have is a paragraph that had been full of errors turned into a paragraph that has no errors in the basic language convention, spelling, punctuation, grammar, syntax. And it still has retained my voice because I've told it not to make some of the changes that it suggested. If you aren't using a tool like this, or if you've tried to use it and you don't get it, if you aren't using it, 
try it. If you have tried it and you don't get it, reach out to me. I will help you figure out how to use this and similar tools that will help you avoid these basic errors that can mean the difference between a B minus and an A minus or, or, or more. So please use these tools to your advantage.